Okay, let's look at elimination reactions. We're going to take an alkyl halide, say this one, 2-bromobutane, and treat it with a strong base. NaOH will work. Now, OH- minus has some problems in it that it's not very soluble in inorganic solvents. So usually we don't use NaOH, but we'll start with NaOH because it's the most familiar strong base to most students. And what happens is you end up making an alkene and Na plus and Br minus and water. So what is being eliminated in the elimination reaction? Well, if we look at this compound here, and the one that I formed right here is 2-butene, what we have is we have an H right here. Now the key to elimination reactions and most of and all of the reactions that we're going to be looking at in this set of podcasts is that we have a really good leaving group here. So bromine is a really good leaving group. It's stable on its own. It will go and form bromide, which because it's the conjugate base of a strong acid, is pretty much non-reactive. So it's very stable. So this is a good leaving group. And so we have an H next door and we have an OH minus that is looking for a proton because it's a strong base. Strong bases want to pull protons. So in this reaction, this is the mechanism. It's a one-step mechanism. The OH minus comes in, picks up that proton, and the driving force here is we're going to form the double bond right here and the leaving group leaves. Three arrows all at once. This mechanism drawn like this is a concerted mechanism. It happens all at one time. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about with this mechanism is a little bit of kinetics. This is called an E2 mechanism. E, of course, stands for elimination, but this little 2 stands for bimolecular, which is a kinetic term for the fact that there are two molecules, OH- and the alkyl halides, involved in the rate determining step. I just wrote that out because it's hard to write and talk at the same time. So the rate determining step, if you remember from your general chemistry, is a lot of times called the RDS. The RDS is the slowest step, the highest hill. Well, obviously there's only one step here, so of course it is the slowest step. Now the other thing you could ask is if you look, there's a proton next door. I could totally lose the proton over here just as easily as I lo lose the proton over here. Here's the mechanism. Pick up that proton, double bond forms, leaving group leaves, and you form one butene. This, the, but this is the minor product. This right here, the 2-butene, is the major product. This is an example of what's called Zaitsev's rule. It's not the opposite of Markovnikov's rule, but people think of it together just because Markovnikov rules deals with reactions of alkenes, where Zaitsev's rule deals with reactions that form alkenes. So Zaitsev's rule says that the alkene that forms predominantly, some of this does form, um, is the one that is most substituted. So this alkene is monosubstituted, whereas this alkene is disubstituted. And it has to just do with stability and bond strength. So the more stable, the more substituted the alkene, the more stable it is. So whenever you form an alkene with elimination reactions, you have to remember Zaitsev's rule. 
Now the other interesting thing about this E2 mechanism is it's what is called anti-periplanar. A big word, but it, what, what it means is these have to all line up for the electrons to flow in this nice concerted mechanism. The H has to be in the same plane as the BR. So in an open chain um, alkyl halide, there's no problem. It's going to line up because remember, we have a driving force of this really good leaning, leaving group. But when you're in a ring, if you look at it, if I draw cyclohexane and put bromine here, the H that's going to come out, I have an H next door and an H here. The H that will be lost as you treat this with the strong base, and I'll use the strong base that is shown in most, um, most textbooks, is sodium or potassium potassium ethoxide, sorry, that was an ethoxide. And so what happens here is here is your base. It has the same um, basicity as OH minus, but it's more soluble in, in organic solvents. It'll go like this and then form the double bond and this leaves. So this H is not the one that goes. This is the H that is lost to form the cyclohexene. So it's an interesting thing um, that if you have this compound right here, and I have to practice drawing my chairs, it's been a while. Um, here is T-butyl um, cyclohexane, and let's make it cis-1-bromo 4-T-butyl cyclohexane versus trans-1-trans-1-bromo. trans, one, trans, one bromo for T-butyl cyclohexane. This reaction is 500 times faster than the trans. So this is cis and this is trans. And the whole reason this one is faster, now if you remember, a T-butyl in essence locks the ring from flipping. Be it can't flip because the T-butyl has to be equatorial. So if we look at this, here's our bromine, and here's our bromine. If you draw the H's next door, here are the H's next door to the trans. So axial and equatorial, and it'll be axial and equatorial over here. None of these will be in the same anti-periplanar arrangement just like this one is, but if we look at the cis, here is that H that's going to be lost when the base comes in to take that proton. So this elimination reaction works best with secondary and tertiary alkyl halides. And you need an uh, alkyl halide and you need a strong base and the strong base that you will see mostly in your textbooks are, is probably the sodium ethoxide or potassium ethoxide. And sometimes you will see NaOH. Realize the Na plus and the K plus are spectators. So a primary uh, alkyl halide, say uh, let's just do propyl bromide. And I treated that with NaOH. The number one reaction you would see here is a substitution reaction. So it, you would end up with this reaction. So primary, react, primary alkyl halides tend to do a substitution with this strong base. If you needed to form an alkene, what you have to do is you have to slow down the substitution reaction. So this is the substitution reaction that we'll learn about in the next podcast or two. But if we wanted to actually make this work, what we're going to do is slow down the substitution by adding a bulky base. And the bulky base that is used is uh, sodium T-butoxide. So now if you think about this, to make a substitution reaction work, it has to come and attack the bromine right here. But since we have all this bulky methyl groups right there, 
it slows down the substitution reaction and the base can actually, I'm just going to call this base, the base can actually come and get that proton and form the double bond. So in order to make a alkene that's primary, you need to use a bulky base, which is t-butoxide.